kill him. What's going on, guys? <clears throat> so, this is where we ended up last week with the thinking emoji disc. Uh, one thing I really did was I. Finish the uh, little sort of like bracing in there offline. I just notice it was a little bit too. Let's go on, Kingsley. Um, yeah, so I think I'm gonna um, do one more disc today. It shouldn't take all that long. It's a quick one that I want to do, um, and then we'll move on to some environment stuff where I want to kind of do um, just some some sprucing up of our environment. It's a little bit sparse, so I want to build some props, um, throw some visual interest, hopefully, in the sort of off-camera areas in our game, so that there's just you know a more realistic feel to it all. Let me grab this material. This is toy plastic. What is this material? It's toy plastic. That's skin shape. Okay, this is probably toy plastic would be a better fit for this. MRGB want this color. Probably want to be the gray. Trying to find a color that works against. I want to complement the sort of bright, bright colors of the face without clashing with the yellow and orange. That red just about does. similar groups so we can get all of these spheres on one poly group. Thanks, Dick. 
What's up, Stick? Um, Blands, that's awesome. Did you do the uh, Coursera, as I mentioned from last week? Because that, um, that's the place to be, so to speak. You know, I didn't really actually... I'm not sure if this is um, facing me, my camera. I didn't really like, look at my camera before I activated the stream here. What's up, Kyle? Feeling good. So yeah, guys, um, gonna put the disc. For those of you guys just joining, I'm gonna do one more disc today, and then after that, uh, or not after that, one more disc today, and then um, I think we're gonna have four new discs for the game. And at that point, I'm gonna do a little bit more um, uh, environment stuff. So I've got some environment sketches here. I'm gonna work up a little bit. Um, that I have worked up a little bit that I want to start modeling and then um, start filling up the space in, in the game. So that's what we'll be working on. But that's surprising though, Coursera only has advanced stuff. Like I know last time I looked, and it has admittedly been a while, um, last time I sent somebody there, there was a great deal of, um, there was a great deal of intro materials. So I'm surprised if it's only advanced stuff on Coursera these days, but. Um, dig around a little bit more. Alright, so let's start with the gray. So the one I want to do here, it's going to be like a junkyard one with like a, a wooden frame. Let me show you guys the concept. There's the concept right there. It's just like, you know, it's just a quick sketch. But it's like a wooden frame wrapped in like you know, masking tape or duct tape, a bunch of nails kind of jaggedly sticking out of it, and uh, some rope kind of tying the whole thing together. Obviously very fictional, wouldn't fly in real life, but you know, it should be a pretty simple and cool concept to execute. start is I think I'm probably going to want to get just a good plank for the purposes of and I'm probably gonna do an insert mesh brush that I'll then spin around and do various instances of Initialize it, make it a QQ. A lot of times I just like to just duplicate whatever I'm working on, make it a QQ. I know I'm gonna need some base to start with. Solomon Napoleon, what's up? Thanks for coming by. 
Bill and Ted, excellent reference. Okay, I think there's not enough Geo here. Cracks brush, it's free brush, it's very excellent. Okay, be good. Need a little more Z intensity. I really want to cut into this wood. So these are going to be the wood planks that adorn the side of the thing.
I just have extra G there. Okay. Um, you're going to be limited because it has to fuse that somehow. Uh, one thing you can do also, mesh fusion kind of works, but mesh fusion is great for retopologizing that, and it'll fuse it. It'll fuse it to kind of keep your uh, geo like topology creased. However, um, the problem you're going to have is that uh, you probably have this thing already laid out, so you're not going to go through and you know do the mesh fusion operation on each possible thing. Like I've had all these studs right here. I'm not going to go through and, and, and remake all these studs. The way mesh fusion works, you put like a poly group for each section you would want to stud, and that would be time consuming and probably you know you probably already are past that point with yours. So um, you know it kind of depends on how you want to do it. The, the, you know obviously um, the groups dynamesh thing. It, it it doesn't you know maintain the hard group edge as much as it 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 um, it just turns everything into its own separate piece. So that would be a good way to sort of maintain the shape. Let's see what this turns out kind of turns out with. So that might be a good way to maintain the shape, but do I have duplicate geometry on all of this? Oh no wonder those things. And disappear, um, but like at least at the very least, like that'll cut out all the geometry from from each other, and it'll separate everything. So doing a group dynamesh might help you out in that regard because it'll like it'll kind of maintain the existing polygroups, and maybe the the cuts and stuff you can make will be based on that. Um, I don't know if that's helpful or not to you, but that's something that, that might help you get your maintain your piece. Otherwise, it's just a matter of you know. There are two. There's duplicate balls over there. So I have to go through and deal with that. But that's a tedious task I'll try to keep. It's never interesting to watch, so we won't worry about that right now. Um, yeah, if I uh, make sure I get these out of the way so that. Delete hidden. Um, just giving yourself enough geometry. And limiting your blur, maybe doing a project because project will it'll return geometry to where the shape it was. Um, index. This is the uh, this is one of the new discs. I'll show it to you in a second here. Um, just that groups on still because it, it kind of depends, Jackal. If you're doing curved clean edges versus you know 90 degree clean edges or, or 45 degree clean edges because I mean like you know you really the, the point is if you're using Dynamesh you kind of want to understand that you're gonna live with this right here and either not care or do it a different way like if you're doing this for game projection which is what I'm gonna be doing I'm gonna keep these separate because that nice clean edge right there I like and when I, you know, subdivide this, I'm gonna get all the high resolution, high resolution geometry that I want, and those nice clean edges. But then when I come through and do the low poly version of this, I'm gonna just like have a cage around that, and I'll get all those nice clean edges from the high poly. Okay, so you're doing um, 3D prints, so. You know, I guess the the thing for you would just be, um, you're always gonna want that geometry welded, and you don't want there to be. I wonder if there's. Let's see. Let's see what we can do to beat back like a dynamesh. Let's do dynamesh groups first, and that'll keep everything separate. I obviously, if you're doing 3D printing, then. Keeping them separate um, won't work for you, but if I keep it separate for now, I'll get some 3D geometry, and you know, all the geometry will be kind of distributed, and it's a nice dense mesh. And this is 3.8 million, and it did that pretty quickly. Um, some decent density here. Now they're all separate. The edges are still clean. 
I'm going to take off groups and this is going to weld them together. But before I do this, um, I'm going to try something. I know it does before. I'm going to try storing a morph target and see what happens. If we store a morph target, that might help, but I, I wonder since this geometry is you know, new. It might not work. So with a morph target here, I'm going to go to my morph brush. Yeah, I didn't figure that would happen just because when you do a dynamesh, you get all the new topology and all the new geometry, so that's not going to work. Um, you know, I think, so just to get, just to clarify, this is like what you're worried about, right? Is like this little geometry here around the side there. Because um, I think, you know, just because of how the algorithm works, you're kind of going to be, yeah, so like you're going to be kind of up a creek here only because like you to fuse things together you're basically fusing fusing the geometry together is your biggest problem and you know if, if Dynamesh is a great tool but if you're talking about like the ultra precision you need for 3d printing um, you're gonna be need to be a lot more precise with it so like when I say that I mean like you know I think that probably the way to do this then would be to nano mesh this or array mesh this so that every face like I would go back to low poly you know, if you if you imagine that all of these faces on the grip were their own poly group, and then you would make just blow that. like you would do a little face here, do a little face there, and like do like a a nano mesh to insert spheres, right, or insert geo everywhere it's going to be. And then fuse it together with like decent, like with the mesh fusion workflow. Um, let me just bring it up pretty, pretty fast. So here's mesh fusion. Um, it's basically without. I'm not going to go through the whole thing myself, but like um, you basically have your sub tool and you put in the thing you want to add to it and ZBrush will automatically weld it in a way that preserves like the geometry. So like when you're trying to do see how I just did that? When you when you're trying to do this with Dynamesh, Dynamesh is a is a very useful algorithm. The algorithm is always going to like just put polygons and density where it's trying to figure out shapes. Like you're never gonna have a solution where it's like keep me a 90 degree like I'm, you're not gonna have like a 90 degree creased edge on this on the center of the sphere there's just no way to solve that problem like you know you could do things with Z remesher you know you could take the Z like if I keep these grouped dynamesh them together without groups and then right now I'm gonna come through and do like a pretty heavy-handed Z remesh you know, maybe like give it adapted so it can get as big as it wants adapt like let the adaptive slider work so it creates a lot of polygons and then maybe like freeze groups Let's see what this does but you know my presumption is that you know because those group lines exist it'll do a decent job it has enough geometry to do a decent job and then maybe you can come through and crease based on groups and that'll like you know tighten up your edges but if you're gonna, if you're trying to use dynamesh you're kind of always going to have those those fusion those fusion bridges if you don't if you want them to remain super creased and super precise edges unfortunately you're going to do a lot you're going to do a lot more work i mean dynamesh is kind of a blessing in that like it's just a one click you know weld a one click you know merging and it's just like a very very useful tool but the problem you're gonna have is that yeah, like it, because it's so useful, you know, you're gonna run into those issues. So like, I've just Z remeshed and it's kind of done what it could with those areas. And if I polish by groups, perhaps you know, a polish by groups could like, you know, slightly. So like now I've like done a polish by groups, and obviously it didn't like nail the form. But because it's Z remeshed and there's some geometry there, it kind of like kept it, you know, as best as it could. Like solutions like that might get you there. Um, obviously those spheres are a little bit more, you know, cylindrical now, and there's artifacts here, and there's other, you know, problems to be fixed, fixed up, but, you know, that's like, at least you're not getting that, like, kind of crufty stuff there. Um, what's up, Doug? Welcome back.
you know, and like I said, like, you know, there, there's ways to do this better. So, like, you know, I've cleaned out all of that stuff, all of the weird little deform deformations over there. It, it creates this waviness. Oh, yeah, the, I still have the Mesh Fusion video up. <laughs> Thank you for that. And then, yeah, so, like, Mesh Fusion works in a way that, like, you would just place, like, if you're doing, especially if you actually, you know, you say you're doing 3D sculpts, Mesh Fusion might be the ticket, because if you're doing 3D sculpts, you know, you could have your inserts kind of pre-planned. Like, if I was going to do... Um, let's see what I want to do here. I want to show that if you had like a body part, for example, there's an insert mesh body part. There we go. If I wanted to turn this thing into, you know, some kind of wacky head thing, right? Um, get some noses. Some good, some good nose on the disc. Um, so like. Say you're doing a 3D sculpt and you want there to be, you know, a hard fix on it, you do mesh fusion and that will maintain that crease right there with it. And that might be the thing to do if you're doing um, 3D printing sculpts because that'll give you sort of the geometry you want to have will be maintained and the, the point of intersection will be preserved as well. So it's something to think about. Nose disc is actually not a bad call. You know, Ashley's already got uh, a monopoly on on the on the feet market on the insert mesh foot, so I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to mess with that. <laughs> so just for the guys who joined Index, I'll show you uh, this disc here. Yeah, let me just delete all so I don't mess around with the, with the changes I made. So that's this disc um, index. That's the one we'll be adding pretty soon here. A little thinking emoji phase. Anyway, I hope that's helpful. Um, yeah, this is also industry standard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think the IMM body parts brush needs to be incorporated into our game somehow. I, you know, I, uh, that might be a be that might be a pretty cool disc. Like, what if it's like a bunch of arms grasping each other and like. I guess you would need something for the middle, so maybe like a big eyeball for the middle. Just like a body parts all munged together into a disc. It would be really cool. I'm gonna write that down. Because maybe we'll do that next week. Body parts disc. Just make it like sort of like a 3D collage of body parts and it's all that'd be pretty like creepy looking, but I think pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Well yeah, I actually that's what I'm thinking. I think maybe uh you know, like the foot could be the handle you grab onto, like the kind of you know toe of the feet, and that could be really cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm into that. I think that'd be a funny one. Um, you know, I think I'm getting kind of too far down the rabbit hole of weird discs, so I want to do a little bit more sane ones, so they kind of fit a little bit into the uh, canon. But I could spin, I could spin my wheels on like silly, like. You know, kind of arcadey dumb ones for so long, but it just hurts. Okay, so let's get back to this bad boy. What's up, memory? First time on stream. Well, welcome. We're just building some stuff for Disc Jam here. Um, I think kind of a rounded look at this plank would be good. The one thing I want to probably do, just look at some reference here. I think I probably want to. The tip of these wood planks is usually kind of dug into, but like sawed off. So let me. I got my, got my noses here. Too many noses. Yeah, well, like, food-themed discs, we have a few ideas on. Like, the main one I want to do is sort of like the, you know, like, the traditional arcade, like, what's the Final Fight health? There's, like, the Final Fight health thing. Yeah, like, 
something like this, or it's just like a big plate of like peas and carrots or something like that, or it's like, you know, just like a dinner plate of some kind, you know, like where it's like, you know, like a, like a big kind of ham with like peas and carrots and it's just like a plate of food, you know. A ramen noodle disc would be really cool because you could do a ton of detail. It would be like the, the fused sort of ramen together. Ugh, God, there's so many good things you can do with food. The main thing is that I don't want, like, there's so many good things you can do with food. Like the pizza disc we've had suggested, uh, donuts a big, people want the donut disc. And that the donut disc works because it's like already shaped round with a hole in the middle. And you can throw rainbow, make it pink with rainbow sprinkles and really stylize it up. Um, you know, it's just, again, it's like, but if we have like we have like eight or nine discs in the game now, uh, we're adding three more in the next patch, and then like if we do like three food discs, then it's like that's like you know every, like that's like fifteen percent or something like that of, of like food themed discs. And I, I don't know if that's too much, but uh, I I love like the concept. So we'll see which one we do first, and then uh, you know we'll go from there. I don't mind that it's kind of chunky right now because obviously if you pull back a little bit the chunkiness kind of goes away and if you subdivide it it's like nice and rounded and fine and then you know the fact that it's chunky right now is, is fine because I'll you know when I project this into the, the game resolution match the normal maps will get um, smoothed out as I do the high poly to it so I don't really mind how you can see like there's little kind of jaggy edges and that's just not a problem it's not gonna that's not gonna be a problem when we project this onto the game resolution mesh I think actually I might do like the donut just on stream here today because it won't take very long and it can be the intro into the, the food disc foray. We'll see uh, where that takes us. It's hard to be like random without being stupid looking. You know, it's like hard to be like, you know, like the patterns that these the reference I'm looking at for wood. It's like it's so random and kind of natural and out there. Like if I start doing like a little bit too much curve or a little bit too much, too little curve, too much curve, it starts looking real dumb real fast. where to tie these faces into each other. Facets around. You know, not wild. I don't know, there's another spiral right there. Um, I'm going today until uh, 2.30. Actually, sorry, Kyle and Kingsley, I forgot to mention. I, uh, that, that meeting from last Thursday got pushed to this Thursday, so I'm actually going to end a little bit early today. 
Um, so I'm trying to kind of maybe hustle and see if I can get this wooden disc done. Maybe finish two pieces today um, before 2.30. Yeah, 2.30, usually I go from noon to 3. Let's say it's going to be a little I think Joseph, Doug, I think uh, Joseph uh, streams. I saw the and I saw a notification come up. He streams too early for me. <laughs> I'm a, not a morning person. But I saw when I woke up, I got an email that Joseph streamed uh, a couple days ago on the, on the morning. So I'm pretty sure he went this week. Joseph streams. If you, if you guys want to see some real helpful stuff. Oh, that might have been Paul, actually. I think Paul did that stream about the Did You Know. Um, Joseph and Paul um, from Pixelogic do these really informative, like, you know, show you things that no matter how, I've been using ZBrush for a pretty long time, and you always kind of seem to learn something new with those guys' streams. It's really helpful. Looks like he did get um, pushed. When I make the emblems, I use Photoshop Stick. Yeah, I use a combination of things. Um, I use uh, a lot of times. Actually, I've been meaning to do this um, in ZBrush for a while because I have um, a few emblems that I'm working on that are. Uh, that are. Um, what's the word? I have a few emblems that are uh, that are like kind of 3D-ish in nature. So a lot of times I'll pop over to ZBrush and I'll sort of like like, I, like I'll build a platform, you know, in ZBrush. Like if I, can, if I wanted to do like you know a bunch of dudes on a wooden plank, I would you know put some little mannequins in here, um, turn see-through on, and then like I would go over to my other application and would have ZBrush sort of lined up in 3D. Then I can just sort of like do a quick paint over where I have like the reference there and like, you know, it's a bunch of dudes jumping off the plank, whatever it is. Like, so like, yeah, like that's kind of like a lot of times I'll work. This is Sketchbook, which is a really kind of fast, easy. If I use Photoshop as well, Sketchbook's a more like, you know, useful, um, you know, quick sort of painting, painting app. So it kind of gets out of your way. That's a decent plank in the middle. Do. And I want six edges here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
eight edges. So I'm going to kind of organize eight of these around in a loop. One thing I'm noticing is that I kind of like the broken plank look is a little bit better. I might just snap all the edges off of this thing. Kind of if I do like some shards, it actually looks a little bit better. Probably gonna do that. I think I'm gonna probably like chop this thing up a little bit. Yeah, memory. I actually been doing a little bit of hard surface um, for some of my previous stuff. I'm doing a little bit more organic these days. Um, but yeah, like I do a little bit more hard surface um, from time to time. It depends on the disc um, and the concept. But I can do more of that stuff, you know, later on, if you guys want. Ooh, Planked would be a good name for this disc, because we always kind of do some kind of silly, cute name. So maybe Planked is what we call this thing. Um, I'm going to duplicate off, let's save this real quick, disc, let's call it Disc Plank. Um, I'm going to save this off, and then duplicate that and maybe just do a quick chop, see if I can chop this thing up. Um, I think trim curve might be the name. Maybe slice curve so I can get it good. Okay. So now I'm just going to try and get some like decent... I'm double tapping alt to get those sh hard shapes. Or not hard shapes, but like the you know with the curve brushes. Yeah, I kind of like it. I cut it, but it did, oh, it, it didn't get that one right there. I'll do this again. But yeah, so like if you're using the slice curve brush, you can hit Alt to like get a new curve point, right? And that's gonna give you a nice curve there. Um, group visible, so it's all one poly group. Um, but if you double tap Alt, you'll get sharp points. So something like that. I think the trick is when you have this many sharp turns, I think it's gonna struggle to like break up the geometry as I want it to. Yeah, see it's gonna it's taking like the line and going into infinity on it.
I think it really struggles with those V's. It's kind of cartoony, you know, not really realistic. I mean, most of our discs tend to be like in the realistic space. I might have to like come in here and maybe do some like noise. I'll probably like end up doing some surface noise via um I'll probably end up doing some surface noise via noisemaker. I'm not sure why this brushes. Let me the other side and see if I depth settings are fine. Back face mask is off. Noise brush is doing something very strange. I don't know if anybody from ZBrush uh, knows why that would be. Like this is the effect. Does this brush work differently than I remembered it? Brush surface seven. Okay, let's try that. It's the brush surface seven. The mere fact that it's a volume brush means it's grabbing some other faces, so I'll have to figure out a way to um, get some decent noise on that. Smooth concrete is a good one too. Let's do another one of these chops at the bottom. I'm actually, let's see if I can just chop this only using chunker.
animal theme disc would be cool. I've actually got a concept I'm gonna do. It's like a dragon theme disc, where it's like two halves of. Um, it's like just it's like a it's like two grips, and then the middle is like this like metal dragon coiled around in the middle. Um, you know, and honestly, there's no such thing as not fitting in the game in, uh, index. Like I honestly just think that like since it's an arcade game, we can get really out there and silly with it and you know I think that's a good thing um, so I don't think there's any such thing I mean like I, I want to kind of make it you know for every like silly disc we do we want to like keep a decent normal disc in there somewhere but of course like you know it's an arcade game it's meant to be pretty silly in the first place so for this I'm gonna do some mask lasso maybe select lasso faces that are causing me trouble right there. And the little dynamesh will clean this all up. Delete hidden. Close holes. I'll dynamesh that. Auto groups to make sure I tighten up all get all my geo into one thing delete hidden now get rid of all those dangly bits so now this is symmetrical and why I can go through and maybe just kind of punch some of these up a little bit dynamic push those down a little bit And the main thing is that like broken wood is not actually like this, where it's like it's not actually. Um, it wouldn't be. Cons it would come to like a point. It would. It'd be more of like a fractured kind of fiber. It wouldn't be like chunky and blocky like that. Um, so maybe like you know I'll go through and cut this up a little bit and, and you know make some kind of fibery sort of hairs or something coming out. But for now, this is a pretty good place to be. I guess 300 song playlist, but I feel like every week I play with the same five songs. I mean, that's not shuffle. Those aren't the best little cuts there, but just because 
because I'm gonna paint them. This is all gonna get abstracted out when I, when I come in here and pop it out full of noise. It'll just be like a base layer of, of kind of grain, and then like when I put noise on it, it'll all kind of just wash out. Okay, so now that I have one of these, I'm probably going to want to do another one to be honest. Um, let's start setting this thing up the way I want to. Might be a good time to do an array mesh, honestly. Yeah, being quick saving. I could play with this all day. <laughs> Ramish is so much fun. Um, but I'm obviously going to get lost in this before I find the thing I want. Something like this. Going after. Array Mesh is a great tool for like, um, 
you can scatter junk with it. You could um, do an ice disc would be cool. Maybe like both elements, like a flaming fire disc and an ice disc. I haven't really experimented with like elements at all. Like that. Fire and ice discs. Good idea. I like that. Oh, right now. I think. A ray mesh is like a nice way to procedurally like scatter things. Um, you can add randomness to it. You can do it super ice, you know, super tight. The way I've just had with like the full center. A few ways to, to get that done. Wait for the program to respond. I'm doing uh, auto groups, but with 4 million polys, it's going to take a minute. So yeah, I mean, a ray mesh, um, I'm hoping to get really, I'm like dedicating like a couple hours to a ray mesh this week because I want to just like dig into it and, you know, really become like second nature with it. I'm kind of still learning the ropes with the ray mesh and early um, dug into it all that much. And for all the, all the symmetrical work that I do, um, a ray mesh is really going to enable me to kind of empower some, some cool stuff. No, I think I'm gonna do is end up like um, I think I'm gonna make a second plank, and like maybe the, the planks on the, on the ground will be a little bit um, the the lower planks will have a little bit um, you know be a little bit longer, maybe even a little bit curvier, so that they kind of fit better underneath. But so far, so good. That's a decent start. Um, is it the right size? Yes, it is. I think presumably, like, you know, if I made these ones a little bit longer, the lower ones a little bit shorter. Yeah, and stick. I'm about to I'm about to make some nails right now. So the way the nails are gonna work is I'll I'll show you. I'll make like a handful of them, and then I'll just start like, you know, insert meshing nails all over this thing, and I'll I'll do like a little insert mesh brush now, and we'll do like random nails throughout. How long have I been using ZBrush? You know, I'm not really sure. Uh, I don't even remember the first time I got into it. I got into it when I was like still in school and we had like a school license and I was obviously like a computer science engineer. So I didn't have a lot of use for it at the time, but I did love it. And so I started kind of experimenting with it. And then when I was at work for Activision, uh, I made them give me a ZBrush license and I would just like dig around making you know characters or shapes and just kind of playing around with it. So it's, I'm not even sure when I started getting super into it, um, but then obviously with this jam I started using it like kind of constantly, getting a lot better, a lot faster. All right, so now I guess we can start making some nails. Um, let me just sort of duplicate this off. I'll make plank. Initialize it to.
I'd like these kind of be obviously like kind of cartoony crooked nails. That was a little bit more chunky, but I think this disc kind of warrants it. Just based on the fact that the disc itself is pretty um, bulky and cartoony. First of all, what went through my mind is how stupid am I to actually volunteer for this. It, it, it was unbelievably painful. So that's one nail. Um, probably make a few more of these. And then we'll do some Mr. Mesh Brush.
That'll be the base one I start from. start making this game, Jay and I have been inserting, like, putting jam as a suffix for, like, all things. We're also kicking around, like, if our next game's gonna have, like, jam in it in some way and make, like, a whole jam theme, but, like, just make all of our games, like, jam theme somehow. <laughs> song was uh, Breath by Axel and Arth and the one before it that had that weird beginning was Gunnar Olsen oh no weird the one that had that weird beginning is actually not a weird beginning it was the end of the last song before it uh, Detour Gunnar Olsen I think Gunnar Olsen is the artist and the song is called Detour it was the last song I was playing the song was really and this one is called, uh, unless it did a new shuffle. It sounds like it did.
This one I want just like I want this one like completely bent like into the this side. So it's like kinda of digging in it, like one of those like nails you kinda of see like just hammer down on top and like kinda of digging in the side of the thing. Got all these nails. I'll show you guys a little trick here. Duplicate that one, just mirror it. Cross Z. Got a handful of brushes here now.
they all have their own sub tool. I can go brush, create insert multi mesh. Now I have a brush that has all these nails in it. So one nail, two nail, three nail, four nail. And I can start dragging them out all over the plank. Now I'll go into the brush settings. I'll has multi mesh select there. Select it at one. And the multi mesh selector chooses which one you're gonna like have. I believe th three is random. Yes, it is. Is it? No, it's not. You can choose like every time I do this, I forget which way I do it. Variations is how many variations there are. Let's go to this. I have five. Two, five variations. And the selection is random. One, two, three. Random. That's a zero. thing I didn't do right is that I wasn't looking I wasn't like framing the mesh properly when I did the nails brush and they're all facing the wrong way. Um, yeah now that they're facing the camera the right way they're all gonna stick out of the surface that I draw them out on. Brush, multi mesh select one, variations I have six random variations. Start at one. Six random. Now it's just drawing out a bunch of random nails. So I can just press control. All these nails it's choosing are random. What's up, particle? flimsy now I look at it I think there's probably a little too much um, they're a little too dangly you know I think I'll probably go back into the brush
They're a little too noodly. I'm gonna go edit that brush a little bit. this process one more time. Merge visible, give them their own thing. They all have their own sub tool here. I'll split by groups. Sub tool, merge visible, go to the merge visible, rename it nails, nails dude, now I'll do a group split, I'll focus on this one at a time. Jagged, a little less noodly. There's hard breaks in there. Two of these, I'll probably delete one of them. So there's the one noodly one, the rest of these are a little bit more hard edge. Okay. We got some nails here. Now once again, we'll go to this one. I don't it's too big. There's something weird about this one. Uh, 
there'll be like one extreme one that'll be amidst the others. And if you want to like increase your chances of getting a, you know, a decent size one. In order to get like a, um, in order to like increase my odds of getting one that's like kind of just crooked like this, um, I'll just duplicate it and then rotate it around. that one, let me duplicate that, rotate that around, Oops. so now I've added a couple more variations, but they're just, you know, the more crooked ones that are a little less noodly, and so when I do the random insert of them all, it's more likely to pick one of those. Mesh. It's going to create a mesh. Oops, it wasn't facing the right way. Insert, insert multi mesh. Brush. Brush settings here. Select the first one. Seven variations. Seven variations. Look at one. Right. Now what I'll do is I'll probably go to save brush. Yeah, so that seems to work okay. Gets the random, and then there's the one bendy one that comes up every now and then. So yeah, you kind of have like a nice random distribution of nails. And the size seems to be good right there, actually. Sort of haphazardly place these nails on the boards.
Our board is filled with nails, and we can start wrapping it with the tape and tying a rope around it. I do want to keep the construction history here on History you can save in ZBrush is so helpful. Okay, here's the pre-array mesh wood. So I'm probably gonna make some changes to this. Um, I'm gonna need to trip, chip this off a little bit. You know, do something about the fact that it's like so uniform right there. It wouldn't be uniform if you put a real wooden plank. So I want to make sure I have a duplicate of this, so I have just the plank on its own. Leaving you alone Until you find your way back home I can probably delete all these nails that have the other set in there. I'll save the brush now. Save that plank. Save the one with the construction history. Some nails. Blank. Save this blank. Save this blank. Yeah, I think the thing I'll probably do now is to start um, wrapping some duct tape around the middle of the wood, and I think I'm going to do that here, and then I'll re-array mesh it. Um, before I get into that, I'm going to take a quick break, go get myself a water, and I will be right back.
So for the tape, it's a really good brush. Insert mesh brush or a curve mesh brush. Looks like it's a curve mesh brush. Curve, strap, snap. That's the one. Basically what it does is it just snaps to the geo, as its name implies, and uh, let's see, you wrap things quite nicely. Um, this geo is a little bit big and unwieldy. Take this geo down to 300,000 polygons or points. It's a little more user friendly. And so, like, if you drag off with these curved brushes and hold shift, it'll automatically wrap the thing for you.
off the side, hold shift, then it automatically creates a wrap around the thing. placement sake I'm probably gonna duplicate the plank off and take this plank and take it way down size and you can see we mesh it down to a tiny tiny bit of geo all those different um, grooves in the wood are causing it to the curve strap snap to find faces that make the curve brush not paint over nicely. So I'll just duplicate some geo as a sort of placement holder, get some nice low poly faces like this, and this brush will now play a lot nicer. That's what I'm trying to do here. Let's see how much faster that just went.
You always come in here and turn off this snap as well. time to use the uh, move elastic brush because it will keep the kind of width of the thing intact. Of course, an actual strap would wrap into itself and have overlaps and stuff. Um, 
but typically when I do like straps like this, like knuckle wraps, things like that, I don't have as much bother with the actual you know, legit wrapping of it. Um, memory, the trick is to right click, um, navigate, it's uh, the best, something that a lot of the ZBrush instructors have been um, reminding people of lately. Um, I actually remember exactly where I was sitting when I found out that you could just right click the point. So if, like, if, I'm hold if I right click, it always scales, rotates, it makes the pivot where I right click at. So I even actually went into preferences, interface, UI. navigation and right click navigation is on by default but right click pop up is like this thing and I would always get in the way so I disabled that and now it's like I just right click along hold alt to move it but it basically just puts the pivot wherever you are so like it just makes me rip so much faster because like I get a good look at the faces I want to be editing 
right click navigation is very much uh, second nature now. I remember like, <laughs> my wife was like in the other room and I was Tristan years ago now. And I discovered that uh, you could do that. You know, typically I was just doing it the old fashioned way, which is just like all to rotate around and like if I made an edit, I knew that would be the new pivot, so I would just use like alt to move, you know, the, the typical like navigation. I'm not aware that right click even did that. And I kinda did it by accident and I realized it was like right click was like going root pivoting on what I what I touched like without having touched the mesh. And I was like, Oh my god <laughs> She's like, What's what's going on? like was, was everything okay and I was like everything is great I just found out the best thing ever <laughs> just like I freaked out when I saw it and I have moved back Oh yeah, so glad you guys can, uh, I'm glad you guys, uh, were able to pick that up, because that, that right there, it'll change everything about how you move around the application. It really does. That song stick was called Wiggle It by Slink. Let me bring it over here so you can see it. There you go. And this is all royalty free music, so fired it up. Yeah, so the rap things are like this is basically gonna be like duct tape rap. Yeah, Index and ZBrush is definitely one of those things. Like you there's like a million ways to do things in ZBrush, so like I'm constantly finding new ways and I watch a lot of the other instructors on the Pixelogic channel and they they all, everyone does things a little bit differently and it's super helpful because you start finding out new methods I mean I've, I've just in watching the other streamers I picked up a few new brushes um, a few new methods about doing stuff I mean I just uh, there's just so many ways to do things that I end up like one thing I always kind of remind people is that um, you want to like just keep a folder of technique um, you know, like I have this like just big folder of things that I've seen people do and things that that have worked for me and just the, you know things that are just technique that because you're never gonna remember it all and so it's super helpful to just have you know sort of like a backup collate of all the things that you know you find useful because I have like a whole subsection that's just clothing stuff so whenever I go into clothing you're like oh you know what like you know repetitive seam patterns is something really useful but I don't really do that all that much because I don't, I don't sculpt a lot of clothing you know like so when I do I just open up that little tab and I just like oh yeah here's this I have a brush for this I, all the things I don't remember offhand you know all of a sudden come rushing back 
So ZBrush is one of those apps that like I just I just kind of collect technique and brushes and methods and save YouTube clips and just do whatever I can to sort of remember, um, you know, helpful information. What's up, Hard Holland? So yeah, this will be like duct tape. It'll probably be white, I assume. Um, it could also be like kind of like electrical tape, like a black electrical tape. Um, but I was thinking like kind of like a white, sort of almost like masking tape. Just sort of like a wrap, almost like like the kind of like tape you would see on like you know Donatello's bow, or like um, a, a wrap of like you know like a, a wooden kind of. Uh, practice katana or something like that like it's something that would be just like taking that piece up a little bit Right there, I just did a crease by poly groups, crease the edges there, and then started polishing by groups. And that just kind of cleaned out all the little pixel move ops that were causing some kind of abnormality. You um, have your transpose line out, and you hit Control while you move. You'll move a copy of it. So that's what I'm doing there. I'm just like that's a pretty decent strand. It's placed well, so I'm just gonna flip it, throw it up here. Oop, it's 2.30. Um, sorry, lost track of time there. Um, yeah, guys, so that's the uh, wooden plank there. Um, sorry, one sec. I got a meeting about right now. So uh, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, great talking to you. Disc Jam Man, welcome to the stream. Uh, yeah, that was one note I was just showing. That's my one note folder. Um, so yeah, sorry, I got to end a little bit early today, guys. I only got two and a half hours to spare. Um, there's the plank there. Um, that we're going to be wrapping around with duct tape. Then it'll go to these, the duct tape will be propagated to these other things, and then we're going to tie the whole thing together with rope. And the rope will kind of hold the thing together in the middle there. So that's going to be the wooden junkyard kind of disc. Um, showed you guys how to do the insert multi mesh brush with the random 
uh, nails there. And we'll finish this up and get it all textured and ready for in-game next week. Alright guys, sorry to rush off. Lost track of time. Messing with these straps. Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty close to the straps actually. A little few adjustments, I'll be done. Alright guys, um, see you guys next week. Thanks for stopping by.